hello welcome 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 to my channel i'm coral i'm here with the books that i bought this month in june man it is a pretty nice day today considering that we've had a uh, 100 plus degree weather for like two weeks uh it was a hundred and seventeen degrees on saturday where i live so it's been pretty miserable uh i have an old house so like <laughs> the ac is newer than the house it like i this house probably did not have ac when it was built i can't imagine it did it was built like 70 years ago uh but our like little AC is just like chugging and chugging and it's trying so hard <sighs> so I don't have to have the AC on right now which is something it's probably like 80 degrees in here but my fan with my fan in the breeze it's cool enough um so yeah uh I woke up at 4 a.m this morning for no reason my brain's just like you're awake <laughs> like I don't want to be so I've had a lot of coffee I'm excited. I'm going to paint. Um, I'm going to paint the room where my bookcases used to be before I had to throw them out because they soaked up sewer water. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I'll get my bookshelves early in July. So, you know, I'll, I'll be able to film in there again soon, which I'm very excited about. I'm very excited to have all my books out on display. I've bought so many since I've, uh, since my bookcases were demolished. Yeah, I mean, that's what's going on with me this week, today. So like I said, these are the books that I bought this month, most of them. I think all of these are new copies, which is kind of strange for me. I think one of my cats is shut somewhere where they shouldn't be, I'll be right back. It was Fang Fang, she was the culprit. Everybody shame her. Ooh, Howl, no, sit. Fang Fang does not like Howl. <laughs> Poor white thing. Uh, she is turkey shaped. So, okay, let's see, where should I start? Uh, I got a couple books from Barnes and Noble because I was like, hey, let's go to Barnes and Noble. And I'm like, you should stop saying that to me uh, because I just, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I just want so much for there to still be a Barnes and Noble. So like, I just buy a lot of stuff when I go there. I spend more money than I should probably. So uh, the first book I picked up here is Missoula by John Krakauer. He is an inv investigative journalist and he writes a lot of uh, really exciting, hard-hitting, devastating stuff. Uh, I don't think he's written a book that has like a light-hearted message. He's written, he actually uh, went to Mount Everest. He climbed Mount Everest so he and like while he was there all this crazy shit happened and like people died it was terrible um so he's written about that he's written about uh this crazy uh offshoot of the lds church he wrote about the flds uh people he's <laughs> written you know just things like that so missoula this is about uh the college in missoula montana where there has been a lot of uh, sexual assaults, there's been a lot of young women raped, and this deals, or this talks about how colleges deal with those sort of accusations and crimes and how they don't deal with them also. I'm assuming this is just going to make me upset to read, uh, but this is one that I've, I actually really wanted to find an audiobook of it, but it's not at my library. It's not on scribbed as far as I know. I believe I've checked recently. So I bought it. I'll listen or I'll, I'll read it. I'll throw up an audiobook copy. If I do listen, I'm like, I know I can buy the audiobook copy, but I, if there's an audiobook, I also don't know if there's an audiobook, but I'm just getting, just, just stop it. Then I also found Sun by Jack Olson. Jack Olson, I have his, I think his first true crime book, which is The Man of the Candy, which talks about Dean Coral, which I will not get into because when I hauled that book earlier this year, I got into it and it made me upset. So this, I have never heard this story before. I've heard about this book and how it's really good. It is a thick book. This has got to be 
it's almost 600 pages. Uh, this is about a rapist terrorizing people in Spokane, Washington. And one newspaper eventually offers a reward, you know, a reward, like any information leading to the arrest of this person. The editor is taking the calls himself. And then it is found out that the rapist is the editor's son, Fred. Fred Coe is his name. I don't think I've heard of this at all. Like um, how terrifying it would be, how humiliating it would be to find out that that is your son and you've had such a public hand in, you know, trying to apprehend him <laughs> and like not knowing that it's your son. So uh, yeah, I'm really interested in this one. I've heard it's real good. I've also got two books that I've actually read. Uh, this one I read this month. This is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. Uh, this is a thriller about a young woman who works in publishing. She is the only black employee and so she's very excited when another black woman gets hired on but then strange things start happening to the main character. Her name is Nella and eventually she starts to suspect that the other black woman in her in her office may have a hand in it. It gets really dark and sinister and uh, a little bit weird in a good way. So I really, really liked this. I uh, have a full review of it. If you'd like to watch that, I'll leave that in the description. Also, <laughs> The Black Tongue Thief, which I've talked about in great lengths. I've also got a full review on that that I'll leave in the description. This is a fantasy. Uh, it's dark at parts, but I think overall it's got kind of a really not silly, but a uh, very humorous atmosphere. It was a book that made me laugh a lot. This is about a thief who is in debt to the Thieves Guild and he has to go on this uh, journey. And like, if he does that and, you know, does this thing for the Thieves Guild, his debt will be paid off. Uh, so he has to team up with like a uh, knight who has tattoos of crows on her chest and like those tattoos can uh come to life and they're like giant war crows and there's also a witch and just gobble there's goblins and all sorts of really interesting fun characters and um the main character kinch is just so fucking funny and it was a great book i also picked up things have gotten worse since we last spoke by eric laroca this is a novella about one of the most beautiful books i've ever seen oh, all the things they sent some goodies along with the um, pre-order. Uh, this is by Weird Punk Books. And this is about two women who get into this really dark relationship. I don't know much more about it than that. I want it to stay that way. I'm planning on reading it next month in July. July is my birthday month. So I really like to try to get to things that I've, you know, because my reading, has definitely changed since I started a YouTube channel because there are things that I want to read to be able to create content for everybody to watch. So sometimes I have to put things on the sidelines if they don't, uh, you know, fit into my plans at the time. So in July though, I really like to get to those books that I've had to put to the side. Or in this case, I just bought this book. So like, it just wasn't really uh, in my plans for this month but I'm gonna make it my plans for next month. I'm so excited about this one. One of the most beautiful covers I've seen. The cover art is done by Kim Jacobson. Fucking beautiful. I've also got here The Razor Blades in My Head by Donnie Goodman. This is a short story collection, a little novella of short stories. This is one with another super fantastic cover, if you can see. The cover art on this one was done by Justin T. Coons. And I believe all of these illustrations kind of uh, describe, I guess, a story in this collection. I feel like that's not exactly what it, These are visuals for the story in this collection, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so yeah, everyone's been raving about it. Just came out, um, great cover, can't wait to read it. Okay, also at Barnes & Noble, I was finally able to find the first volume of The Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez. Uh, this is, I believe, an omnibus. 
Uh, so it's a couple volumes in this big old book. And this is about, uh, okay, let me read this. It says, out of nowhere, an entire school vanishes, leaving nothing but a hole in the ground. While parents mourn and authorities investigate, the students and teachers find themselves not dead, but stranded in a terrifying wasteland where they must fight to survive. This is a mega honker. It's making my wrist hurt holding it up. But um, I have seen three volumes of this, but I'm not sure if there's only three. Uh, it sounds good. I love a good horror manga. I bought this kind of after uh, finishing Tomie by Junji Ito this month and loving it. So I'm like, give me all the horror manga. Next, I bought The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. This is another new release. This is a fantasy book and it's about a young girl who lives in Edinburgh. She can speak to the dead. Uh, there is something else about this though. There is a library of the dead, but I'm not quite sure how that plays into it. Um, there is kind of a mystery she's finding. Let's see, it says, the dead begin to whisper that someone's bewitching children, leaving them husks, empty of joy and life. So uh, the main character feels obligated to, you know, investigate this. And I think that leads her to the library of the dead. I could be wrong though, but um, this sounds like a really fantastic, dark, gritty fantasy. Okay, next I have The Deep by Amakatsu. I believe this is sort of supposed to be like her book, The Hunger, which was kind of an alternate history of the Donner Party. However, this one is sort of a alternate history of the events of the Titanic and what happened. Uh, I really don't know much about this. I know that there is a supernatural twi twist. I know it's an alternate uh, telling of the Titanic incident, but I don't know more than that. Of course, I wanna keep it that way because that's just who I am. This is one that's been on my, you know, on my watch list since it came out. And then I saw it at Barnes and Noble and I wanted to buy it because I will buy anything in their horror section that I do not already own because I just want them to keep, uh, you know, having a hearty horror section. Okay. And then last, before I get to the books I received in subscription boxes this month, I picked up The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I have a couple of their books. I, I believe I have two of their books. I have Magic for Liars and I have, mm, I can't remember the name of the other one, but it's like a weird alternate history where we did in fact uh, introduce hippos to the Everglades, which was like an idea that they had a long time ago. Luckily we didn't because I'm sure that would have really messed with the ecology. They already like really tried to mess with the ecology of the Everglades. It's kind of interesting if you, you know, read up on it <laughs> but this is this book is not about that this is about a woman who creates a clone of herself and the clone has these characteristics that she herself does not have and uh it, it's more of like herself as a more gentle person and eventually her husband starts having an affair with the clone and uh the scientist does not fucking like that so that's all I know about this. I've heard it's great. I've heard that all of Sarah Gailey's books are great, but um, just haven't. I should do that. Actually, I should probably pick up one of her books next month because, you know, I just keep not getting to them and there's no reason. I just don't. Lastly, I have a couple books from subscription. I have a couple books from subscription boxes. This first one here is just beautiful. This is Witches Steeped in Gold by, ooh, I don't know how to, how to say this, Sianan Smart? I'm guessing that that's what it is. Uh, so this is a Jamaican inspired, a fantasy, a YA fantasy, and it's about two witches who are enemies of each other, but they have to team up, you know, to fight like a greater evil. Oh, I mean, I just gotta say, this book, this is a really beautiful edition of this book. I, and I really love that there is no name on the cover. There's no 
I mean, I can't say there's no cover art, but like, there's no people or faces. There's no title. It's just on, just on the spine. It's a really beautiful edition of this book. And then uh, from Nightworms this month, we received Beneath the Pale Sky by Philip Fricassi. Fricassi. Uh, this is a short story collection. I can't really give you a synopsis. And then as well, Goblin by Josh Mallerman, which is also a short story collection. Uh, but this one I think s centers around one place, if I'm correct. Uh, I will leave the, what am I trying to say? I will leave the link to my unboxing of the Nightworms package for this month, June, in the description if you'd like to watch that. Uh, yeah, I really like this cover for Goblin. Um, the spine's really nice too. I don't know why I like it so much. Maybe it's the colors. He does have some good colored books. So those are the books that I ended up picking up in June. I really hadn't bought that many until I went to Barnes and Noble this last weekend. So good for me, I guess. I might end up reading more books than I brought in this month, which was one of my goals for this year, which I'm doing very poorly at because I just really love. There's just so many books, you guys. And I don't have enough time in the day to read all the books I buy immediately. <laughs> my eyeballs just can't do it. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these or if there's any books that you're really excited that you picked up this month, um, whether you bought them or uh, maybe you borrowed it from the library or used a service like Scribd or Libra FM. Let me know. I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching once again. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.